Well, I was afraid this was gonna happen. It happened again. I was just rendering a video and temp spiked up and actually locked up the computer. And when that happens, it's gotta go. Something's gotta change. So time for a new cooler. Even though this one is fairly new, it's got a defect in it. There's just an air bubble or there's something wrong in the pump and it's cavitating and creating an air bubble. I don't know, but something it's getting caught. I can grab the lines, I can feel them pumping super hot water here and it's just not making it through the line. It's ice cold coming back from the radiator. Air is nice and cold coming out of the case so it's just got a blockage or an air pocket or something. It may be gunk, maybe gunk in there, maybe an actual, actual physical blockage and my flicking it makes it run through. Maybe it's getting jammed somewhere in the radiator. I don't know, but can't have that kind of stuff for production work, so it's gonna go. This is the 115i. The new version, the H115i Pro is out. It's a next generation pump, a little bit better controls, and uh, that should do it. So I'm gonna run down to Best Buy. They've got one in stock. It's 120 something bucks and uh, that should take care of it. And who the heck is this? Some car just pulled up. Is that UPS? The guy's dressed in all brown. I'm expecting my new panel. Yep, it is for my dishwasher today. That's an interesting delivery vehicle. Cool, so we'll be able to put that on the dishwasher later tonight too. Cool, I'd forgotten about this. There's something else I got uh, with a gift card from Christmas. It's an atomic clock and weather station that I'll put in the master bathroom. So that should look real nice. And of course, we've got the new dishwasher panel. I was about ready to start prep and take this off. I got a load ready to go in as a test. And I was gonna take this off, getting ready for this to come, but shouldn't be that big of a deal. I'm just gonna follow a really basic how-to video from Maytag on how to do this. This is an extremely common repair, it turns out. This physical, this specific model inner door panel is used on a ton of different makes and models of dishwashers. So if you've got this problem with it cracking down in the corners, this is what you're gonna need to do and I'll link that video I'm following down in the description. Super simple, just removing screws along the outside, swapping over these parts here, a couple disconnects on the other side and some push connectors and that's it. Um, I'm not going to detail how to do it because that video down below shows you everything you need to know. Let's go to Best Buy. Got the clock all set. Got the sensor outside on a window sill. It's 73.5 degrees out. I need to find my command strips and we'll mount it up in the bathroom somewhere. I think I'll do the dishwasher panel first and then I'll tackle the cooler. Got the door off and just stuff on there, weighing it down. Chloe's being a little puppy helper. Yes, you are. So here's the panel off and it's super easy to swap this over. I'm just using the cardboard box from the new one to work on here. We've just got a bunch of screws to take out this frame comes off dispenser pushes through there isn't even a support bracket on this model so don't even have that to swap you can see the part that's broken here and why it was leaking this lip here is what seals down into the dishwasher and that's what was making the pop sound when i would close it you can see it's starting to crack on this end this was the left this was the right that was leaking. So the left wasn't far behind from being at the leak point. And it's just worn. It's kind of warped from probably heat and use. It's fairly flexible, but fairly thin. And this just got worn over time. So that's where the water was coming from. Okay, you know, before I go any further, I'm gonna take the new one out of the box and just make sure I've got the right parts here. <laughs> okay, well, it is the right part, and this is an official, this isn't a third party part. Pretty crappy quality control. This is sound deadening material, and it's just a, 
a self-adhesive here. And this is how it came out of the box. It's barely stuck on in places, and some of these were loose in the box. Obviously, I'm not going to do a very good job. I've got some spray adhesive in the garage. It's probably been sitting in a very hot warehouse for a long time. The material itself is just cracking apart. Well, I can't imagine why Sears was going out of business. <laughs> This is probably one of the very last shipments they were ever going to sell somebody because they are now gone. But it's the right part, and I can match up where stuff is supposed to go there. It's a very different material. This is like a, almost like a weave. It's still rubber, but it's really stuck on there well. It's got like a fabric cover on it. This stuff is just plain rubber. Anyway, not a huge deal. We'll stick it down and, geez, make sure it's not gonna fall apart inside the dishwasher or anything like that. And I mean, it's pretty much like Dynamat. When it gets down to it, probably go to Walmart. And even make it quieter and apply my own. Hmm, that's a thought, you know? This is where the majority of the sound is coming from and what the really expensive dishwashers have different than the cheap ones is basically just the addition of more sound deadening material and insulation. Hmm, I wish I could take those off, but the, these are permanently affixed. You can see the yellow adhesive on there. So, nah, I'm not gonna go crazy. I'll just figure out where these go and we'll stick them down. Now this, this is just dead adhesive. There's hardly any stick left. So, we'll fix her up. Well, crap on a stick. I have no adhesive left. There were some things that were too old or empty that I threw out when I moved. It must have been it. I've got no can of DAP, I've got no 3M. I got plenty of cleaner and remover, but damn. Okay, I'm gonna run down to the auto store real quick so I can finish up this project. Damn it. That'll work. Okay, got the new door on. Time for a test. That doesn't work. Almost 100% success. Uh, you can see the new seal much, much better. It's number one intact, but nice and firm all the way against the lip of the tub. The only gotcha was the plastic standoff that's part of the outer door assembly that the screw went into was broken off. The original is just in there spinning, so not bothering putting that in there. Not a big deal. Latch isn't going anywhere. There's a metal plate underneath this plastic, and then it goes into the plastic. These top screws, uh, dumb design, they're going into plastic threaded standoffs. All the sides are into metal standoffs, so just cheapen out there, saving fractions of a penny. Should have used metal all the way around. So, much better. No more click. Nice and solid latch. Um, we shall see in about 20 minutes if we've got a puddle or not. I'm gonna wait until tomorrow to change out the cooling system. I don't have a lot of light in my office by design. I, I like it dark. So I've just got the rather dim ceiling light and then I depend on daylight coming in for you know, light to do anything, but I need a lot of light to work in the computer. So I'll wait till tomorrow and it's well after sundown here. So that'll be tomorrow's project. I don't have anything pressing to render tonight anyway. Well, it's been an hour. The cycle is almost done and we have finally a successful repair, another successful project and it's good as new. Right, Chloe? Okay, good morning, guys. Let's go ahead and get this cooling system swapped out. So this is the H115i Pro, the slightly upgraded to the H115i that is in here now. Primary differences, they've added RGB crap, which I'm not gonna use. Uh, they've got all kinds of RGB built into the pump. If anything, I'll put it on solid red like I have mine now or just turn it off. 
I actually have a ton of RGB in the system and most of it turned off. I'm just not a fan of it. I've got a nice subtle breathing effect on the GPU, um, solid red here and there. I keep the keyboard solid red except for a few keys in white. And that's really about it. I'm, I'm really not about the RGB crap. But this one more importantly has a upgraded pump. What's in there now is a fifth generation. This is a sixth generation. Hopefully some uh, more reliable parts. The fans have been slightly tweaked again. The fans that are in there now are just about dead nut silent. I have no problem with them. I used to have to upgrade them. I've, I've run Corsair stuff for many years since I think generation two. And they used to outsource the whole kit to several different companies. So at any given time, they've got four or five different cooling models out there. And they might have two or three different manufacturers of them, depending on the model you get. These days, I believe they're all made by the same manufacturer. I can't remember off the top of my head who's doing it right now. I think it might be Asetek. But anyway, they've really dialed it in to the best of the best. So you get good quality stuff. Now, the fans they used to put with it were so-so eh, at best. So-so performance, as in they weren't pushing really good pressure through the radiator. And more importantly, they weren't exactly silent. So I would have to replace them with you know, 50 bucks worth of truly silent fans. I and mean, I used to use Noctua, which were excellent fans. Rubber mounted corners for the screws, maglev, no brushes. I mean, truly silent, great fans. But spending an extra 50 bucks when you're already plunking out 130, 150 for a cooling system, that sucked. Well, the last few years, the fans that come with them from Corsair have been top notch. And I have no problem with here. These are the SP series that came with the previous generation. It stands for uh, pressure, silent pressure. And those are made for pushing through the radiator. Chloe's going crazy because she sees birds out back. <laughs> uh, for pressurizing the air through the radiators. And they do an excellent job. And they are really, really quiet, hardly ever have to spin up and even when they do they're not obnoxiously loud but they've improved them and these are supposedly even more quiet they've also changed the firmware and given it some pretty cool features including a truly silent option with a zero rpm feature and this is something that comes from gpus you've got graphics cards hold on i gotta see what she's barking at she loves sitting here in the bedroom watching the birds eat breakfast. They're way out in the pond there. They come swooping in and then they fly across the screen or across the window. Oh, she doesn't like it. <laughs> Do you, Chloe Bar? No. So anyway, back to fans. This comes from the GPU world. This is a graphics card right here. And this one has three cooling fans underneath it. And when the system is not under load, when it's just doing minor stuff or sitting there at idle, the fans are not spinning and it's completely passive cooling. The heat just comes through the heat pipes and just the passive air coming through the system from the case fans is enough to cool it because they're, they're running very efficiently and that's enough airflow to cool it. So you don't have any fan noise until you actually fire up a game or start rendering a video, really using the power. And even when these spin up, they're freaking silent. Well, now they're doing the same things for the CPU cooling fans. This previous generation, the H115i, these are always on. They'll come way, way, way down to like six, 700 RPM and they're silent, but they're spinning. You know, if you put your ear to it, you can hear it. Well, the new ones, are off. You, you, I mean, you can change anything you want or, or, about it, but it does have the option now to be completely passively cooled. So the pump will be running, it'll be flowing fluid through the radiator, but no fan movement. So I don't think I'll use that. I don't have that need, but if you need a truly silent fan solution, that's an option. So those are the main differences. I believe the radiator is the same. Uh, should be the same length of tubing. And luckily I built this with very easy maintenance. I've just got eight screws on the top to take out, 
that releases the entire radiator and fan assembly. Four screws to take off the pump. And my back pops off here and the support plate just slides out from the back of the motherboard. Got a USB connection and two fan connections to unplug on the back and that's it. And then the new one will plug right back in in the same locations. So I'm gonna go ahead and get it swapped. So here's the old versus the new, old on the right. Better looking radiator, in my opinion. It's a little slimmer, and it doesn't have this silver accent on the side. Much easier to just hide and tuck away in a case. Notably thinner and much more flexible lines. That's one thing I didn't like about, well, now the previous generations, they were all fairly thick and hard to really twist into some configurations, but these things, Super easy. And diameter really isn't an issue these days. Back in the day, many studies and comparisons were done against the really thick line versus the really thin line, and there was just no difference. So I'm glad to see the all-in-ones shifting to that. Cooling plates look identical. Pumps are pretty similar. Just a, a little different design there. The big difference is these cooling lines are fixed on this old pump and they come straight out, whereas they swivel and come out the sides on the new one. So that's, again, much easier to fit this in to a lot of different builds. So very nice there. Identical looking wiring and the mounting plates look the same. So I shouldn't even need to change out the back on the motherboard. Just need to attach the fans and plug it back in. Well, they did make some changes. The actual backing plate is the same, so I don't need to swap that out, but I have to take it off anyway because I need to change out the standoffs. They are a different height. These are the new ones, and they're shorter than the ones that are in there now, and that's because they have a difference now in the plate thickness. This is where they attach to. This on the new one is thinner than the old one. This is the actual pump mechanism. So this distance is greater and those old standoffs are too tall. So if I tried to put the new one on the old, there'd be an air gap. So I do need to swap out the new hardware. And I need to swap out the sensing USB cable because they've changed the USB plug type. This is a micro and the old one, uh, what do they call that, type B? So I need to swap out that wire too. All right, got everything in. So far so good. Temps are actually a couple degrees Celsius lower than the previous system. So that kind of correlates to what people were getting. This wasn't a big performance upgrade for anybody, but obviously I didn't want to do it, needed to do it. So if you're looking to come from the 115i to the Pro, don't do it for better cooling because uh, nobody's reporting anything really substantial. But there is a small difference there, just from the more efficient pump design and probably better plate internally. So, uh, some differences here. We have full color control over the RGB of the unit. It is all one unit. You don't have separate color zones or anything. The old unit just had a color bar, just a stripe and you could only change the color of it. You couldn't do anything with it. Uh, primarily that was to change the color depending on your profile or your fan speed or a temperature alarm. But this one, I'm using the same older version of Link software. I don't prefer the, the newer version. This is a, a more simplified version. You can customize the picture of your case and you can drag these temperature sensor boxes around to where everything actually is in your systems just to make it more visually accurate. And so what I've done here is just laid them out as to where things are in my case. And there are a couple new features that are really cool. The old one was pretty limited. Your pump speed, you only had two speeds, quiet and performance. And that went between, I think it was 1500 and 3000 RPM, somewhere right around there. This one gives you three modes, quiet, balanced, and performance. Balanced will be in between. So we're at 2000 RPM and it's absolutely silent. 
Quiet is absolutely silent at all times, but does not provide the best flow for high performance use like a intense game or video rendering. It will greatly affect temp, so quiet is never recommended. You can hear performance. You can hear that extra thousand RPM. You hear a little bit of a water noise. Here, I'll put the mic right up close to it. At 2000 RPM, real nice. Now I'm gonna switch it to performance right now. So it's subtle, but you can just audibly hear it sitting next to it. So I greatly appreciate balanced just for that little extra kick of quietness. But here's a really cool thing. Your fan profiles, this is where the fan speed on top of the radiators is adjusted. It was only tied to the temperature of the fluid, which is correct, I mean, which is good, which is what I'm still going to do. So you've got the temperature of the, the CPU itself. And if you have an air-cooled system, that's what the fans are tied to. When the actual chip gets hot, the fans ramp up and cool it down. One-to-one -one correlation. Well, with a liquid cooler, you're not really concerned with that. What you're concerned with is the temperature of the, the coolant inside the pipes. So what this is tied to, this is saying at this temperature, turn the fans up to this speed. So this helps control your temperatures. This can now be tied to anything, your motherboard temperatures, your CPU, any of the cores, the entire package, for some reason the GPU temp, the RAM, or the fluid. So it's cool that they give you that option. Some people do like to tie it directly to the CPU package. The only advantage to doing that is it's a quicker response. It takes time for the fluid to heat up. Say for example, you're rendering a video, you hit render, and say it's gonna take 20 minutes, right? Well, your CPU heats up like that. It goes from 28 degrees to 70 degrees. Your fans will sit there for five minutes doing nothing different because it takes that long for the fluid to heat up and for the fans to respond. So if for some reason you need the fans to quickly respond, now you can tie it to the CPU core temp. So that's cool. But other than that, we are golden. I need to change around all my fan curves. 100% is absolutely never needed. I found that above really 50% fan speed, there's almost zero difference in cooling performance, but a big difference in sound. I'll change the fan speeds here. Oh, and here's the, uh, the zero RPM mode. So you can actually turn the fans completely off below a certain temperature threshold. That is really cool. I'll play around with that. I think that can be useful. Huh. Oh, that's cool. Now they give you separate fan curves for each fan. That That's new. So fan one and fan two can be different. Huh, interesting. Okay, I like these new features, but you can see that you can turn the fans completely off at low temperatures for even more silence. So anyway, I'm gonna set my fan curves back the way I like them, and we're golden. And that'll wrap up that project. Oh, the RGB controls, that's what I was gonna talk about. You can change your lighting. Where'd the lighting go? Right here. You've got all different kinds of modes now. I prefer static, and I've got it at about half intensity red. That matches the red of most of the other stuff I have going in the case. I would kind of like the breathing effect. However, the software, uh, the Corsair software, doesn't control my GPU uh, RGBs, LEDs. So they're not directly linked. If I put that on breathing, they're out of sync. It looks kind of weird. But you can do any kind of color, any kind of intensity, or turn it off. I like it static. You can blink it, you can pulse it, which is kind of what the GPU is doing. They call it pulse. Um, Asus calls it breathing. You can shift it between two colors. You can shift it between a whole bunch of colors, or you can set it to change depending on the temperature of any of your sensors, your CPU or the fluid or whatever. 
but I just like it static red and bada bing bada boom. Cool.